said we were going to be there until it took the time to find the additional $20, $20 million in savings. So it meant that if we were going to be there to midnight last night, we were prepared to do that. What I find interesting is that we said from day one, and we will continue to say that the TUC, on behalf of the government workers, the public public service workers, public service employees, have gone to the table in good faith and with clean hands. Yesterday, when we were at the BPSU waiting for their team to show up, we got a phone call to say that you know they were working on some things and they wanted an extra half hour. I said, okay, that sounds reasonable. And then we got another phone call 10 minutes later to say they wanted it until 5 o'clock. This was like quarter to four, and I said to Ms. Miller then, I think you need to get the premier to call us back right away because 5 o'clock is, from my point of view, tell us team sitting around for two hours, we don't think that's productive. So he called us back, and he says, well, Mr. Fabric, the issue that we have is that I'm trying to get my cabinet colleagues together, and what we didn't want is the team to come over there with certain things. I said, well, why don't you let your team come? While you're having a conversation with your cabinet colleagues, we can continue to work. And we thought that made better sense. Mm -hmm. So about 10 minutes to 5, um, Ms. Vittle called me back again and said, tell you what, if you're not here between 5 o'clock and 5.15, our team will be leaving. So at 5.14, at 5 to be exact, she called to say they were on their way. Okay, no problem. So we said, we'll give, you, we'll give them to 5.30 to get to BPSU. 25 minutes to 6, they were in there, so we left. And this situation, because it's delicate, and as we said to you down the cabinet office yesterday, every solution's got to have, every problem has to have a solution. So we're gonna to try to find resolution. Those of you who would have listened to Let's Talk last night, where the Bureau of Trade Union Congo is represented by Brother Mike Charles. The General Secretary to be the Bureau of Trade Union Congress. Brother Shannon James, the president of the BUT. Yes. Myself, and I'll call him myself before I get to the star. <laughs> myself as the vice president of the Bermuda Trade Union Congress. Yes. And their brother Jason Hill. Yes. And the reason why I'm saying this to you this morning, those of you who saw the program, it's more for probably those who didn't see it. Because what was real pleasing to us was the way the night finished. Yes. And I say it again, the way the night finished. Yes. Yes. When you have a young person, yes. Yes. a young person yes. call in and give us thanks yes. Yes. for what we're doing on their behalf, yes. that's the gratification that we need to keep, to keep on with the struggle. Because while it may be about us today, it's going to be about them tomorrow. And what she, the encouragement she gave us, the encouragement that she gave us, was to continue on fighting on their behalf. Because it's most important that we can't lose sight of why we're here today. We're here today because of our forefathers, and we can't forget that. So recognizing as a leader what my responsibility is and what their responsibility is, is try to find resolution for you. So the Premier um, offered an apology yesterday to us. He offered an apology to the country for them not meeting yesterday. And whilst I do understand that, you know, an apology is an apology, <laughs> the challenge that we will continue to have is that when we reach out, because he, he reached out to me first thing this morning, he called me at home, and one thing we've got to make sure that we don't leave any stand on turn. I was not prepared to have a conversation with him one on one. I don't want to say he said, I said, not having that kind of conversation. So out of respect, I said to him, I tell you what, it's now 20 minutes to 8, give me to 8.15, I'll be at the office and I'll call you back because I want to make sure that we have some witnesses. Because, you know, all this thing about, you know, I got you on speaker or I got you on cake. So you have to have all that in the back of your mind when you're talking to these guys because you can't trust them. And for us, trust is a real issue here. So having said that, 
when I got here this morning, I called the Premier because, you know, yesterday we went from a very strong position to a different position. And yesterday, by them not showing up, they gave us back the position that we had before that. And that was very important to us. So, what I said to the Premier is that, and if you haven't, if you didn't hear his press statement, he was suggesting that you not come to the meeting this morning. And I got a phone call from Dolly and me this morning at 25 past 7, that Premier's are asking for you to cancel your meeting this morning at 9 o'clock. <laughs> So you want me to reach out to all the government workers between now 7.30 and tell them to not come to me? I asked not of them. We're not doing that. So, the mere fact that he believes that there are some issues that we can discuss at the table. I said to the Premier, and I made a crystal clear to him, sir. What I would like to be in a position this morning to do is go to the members and say to them that you've taken Friday day off the table and we're now going to have a conversation. Well, I don't know if I could do that, okay? So I said to him, I said, let's just, let's just look at something. Um, let's think about your position as government. And we recognize we've got a position as the government. We have a position to represent you. So what I said to him, what you want to be able to do, what we want to be able to do, because I put his example right back on him that he gave to us in the meeting yesterday at Cabinet Office, when we talked about coming on and meet at 3 o'clock. He says, well, okay, if I can come on at me at three, and all the workers come on here, you know, the atmosphere that's going to be outside, so on and so forth. I said, okay. And it's just interesting when you say things, how they come back to bite you. And I said to him this morning, the exact same thing you said yesterday applies today. You want us to go to the table while you got Friday day hanging over our hair. And that to me, that to me is not justifiable. So what you need to do is remove that threat of Friday day. Then we can sit down, come to the table in good faith and have a conversation. And unless you're prepared to do that, we're not going back to the table. So he says, well, let me make some phone calls and, and I'll get back to you. So about 10 minutes later, he calls back. Says I had a conversation with some of my colleagues. Oh. and we're not prepared to take Friday off the table. And I said to the Premier, I said, sir, respectfully, you know, as the of the country, um, I don't think that you're looking at the bigger picture, because the bigger picture is that, you know, we've got schools closed, we've got people out of work, we're trying to get the country back to normal, and you, the the government, is taking a position like, you know, you don't want to remove something. All I said to him, I'm not asking you to throw it away forever. All I'm asking you is that in the interest of industrialization, take your further day and park it while we have a conversation. If we don't get what you think we need to get and you want to bring it back another week or six weeks down the road, you can do that. But for now, in order for us to have a conversation, it has to be going. Now, for those of you that have read the World Gazette this morning, and every time we have these kind of situations, whether it was back in the day with the NBA or the, or the UBP, or even under the PLP, they always look at the law. And thinking that they can hide behind the law. Let me just say to you that justice is greater than the law. Because a non-right law, a non-just law, that's why you have uprisings all around the world. Because people feel like that's an unjust law and as a result of that, it should be rewritten. And all I said to the Premier, and there were no threat, there were no threat, I just said it to him suddenly. That this situation reminds me of David Gibbons. It reminds me of David Gibbons back in 1981. Remember we had the conversation yesterday about next week Monday, which is 50 years of Falcon. I'm going to just remind you what happened in 1981. The government had a position there, and they didn't want to move. And I said to the Premier, what I don't understand is that I'm not asking you to give up your position. All I'm asking you is for now to remove that so we can get a resolution. And I said to him, sir, I think that's a reasonable request under the circumstances. Very reasonable. There is no way that the country or members can think that, you know, you're being, that you're being so unreasonable that for the life of me, I'm just trying to put it together as to what, what, is, what is it all about. 
So you have to think, well, this is about something else. I don't know. But certainly, our position today, uh, based on the conversations that we've had, and as I said to the Premier in person, that is very unfortunate. Uh, I will go downstairs, um, the TUC will go downstairs and report what you said uh, to us, uh, to the me. But it's very unfortunate that we can come here today to tell you that Friday is off the table and we're not going to have a conversation. I understand the Cabinet Secretary has, has called to say that his team is ready to meet. And my answer to that was that until Friday day is gone, we're not going back around the table with him. And that's fine. We are not going back to the table until Friday day is removed. Morning, brothers. They threatened us already this morning for email. Yeah. Don't come to the meeting. Come to the meeting and you'll get the doctor paid. There was no ladder given to the cabinet secretary. <laughs> so, I want to apologize to the membership for yesterday. Mm. We made a huge mistake. Mm. We sent you back work Come on. and they betrayed us. Yeah. We're not going to make that mistake again. <laughs> if you just heard today for information purposes, you can be dismissed. <laughs> yes, sir. Say it again. If you heard today just to gather information, Respect. you can be dismissed. The meeting is now over. Amen. For all the rest of us, here is the plan. We're going in our cabinet and we're staying under until Friday days or the table. We will not make the mistake of sending workers back to work to get the disrespect that we got yesterday. How do you have members sitting at a table from 3 o'clock to 20 to 6 after you came in front of those workers and told them to go back to work so we can have a conversation? So, in the paper today it says, the law is on our side. That's what the government is saying. Okay. <laughs> well, Mr. Premier, let the games begin. There's no long talking today. We're going to follow the same route we took yesterday. But this time, just at a little slower pace. All right. 